the Stream Deck Plus. Look at my thumbnail. It says, do you get it? Like, do you get it? I don't know if I get it, Elgato. Like, you came out with this product, and everybody wanted to get it to try it out. You can use it for editing. You can use it for color grading. But you went and gave the Wavelink software out with it, which I thought was amazing. Immediately, it struck me what this is. It's direct competition to the Beacon Mix Create. But no one really implied that. No videos on YouTube. None of the big YouTubers were mentioning it. Here's our opportunity. This is what everybody's been asking for. Get your audio interface that you want and use it with the Wavelink software. I thought it was a great idea, but it was never marketed like that. And then I think people really don't get it, but I got it. And I wanna show you how I'm using it with my audio interface. And it really could be the setup that you're looking for. I'm using this with my Solid State Logic SSL 2 Plus audio interface. It's got great dynamic range and a low noise floor, and I want to use it alongside with being able to use the Wave Link software for my routing, which it's fantastic. Come on, let's go take a look. All right, so just a quick message. I'm using my USB mic, so this way when we set things up, I'm able to do that. And so let's head over to the Elgato website, and this is the download section. And you're just going to go over to downloads and put in the stream deck and you're going to pick the stream deck plus and then you're going to pick your windows or mac right so we're going to pick windows that's what i'm using and then you're just going to go and download both of these and then once you download them you're going to install them and then once they're installed you'll be good to go and the next step which is gonna be adding the few things we need to have your audio interface in there. All right, so at this point, you should have just downloaded your Elgato software for the Stream Deck Plus and for your Wavelink software. So at this point, you plugged it in, you could open up your Wavelink software, and that should give you access to add inputs. Now, I already had some Wave products, so I had a spot for a mic for my Wave 1 or my Wave XLR there. I'm not sure what you might have, but there may be no inputs at that point. Um, so I'm going to show you right now. We're not going to worry about all this here as far as my audio routing. We're just going to worry about this input right here, the SSL2. So it's there right now, but I'm going to get rid of it. Let's, I'm going to remove that input, and this way it's going to scoot it out, and we can add it again over here onto the right. So if we go to add that input, I'm just going to click on the plus to add an input and I'm going to pick voice chat. Okay. Because I know voice chat's always available for routing. So let's pick that voice chat and then you're going to go and connect with ever inputs you have in your computer. So this is a bunch of my inputs. Well, I'm really want to connect my audio interface. So we just inputted right here, SSL two plus USB audio interface and that is all we'll have to do. And as you can see right now, we have some audio moving over here. Okay. So what I'm going to try to do is mute my mic and see if we can pick up my audio. So I'm going to mute this mic and I'm going to try to pick up an overhead. Okay. So now at this point, you should be picking up an overhead mic. And because I had this in already, You'll notice up here, just take a look at the input. We only have one side moving. Now this is a two channel audio interface, which means that it's a left and right for one and two channel. So if you were gonna use this in OBS, you would go to advanced settings and you would click on your audio interface input and then you would click mono and that would give you a single mono signal to both ears. So in my streaming software, I have to make that adjustment in vMix. I would go to the audio interface input. I'm using the Wavelink stream. I would go to the matrix setting in the settings for the input, and I would click off the four first blocks, and that would make it come into both of my ears. So each, each software may be different 
um, and you'll have to work on that. But you would be dealing with that at, with any type of audio interface that you would be using. I'm using my Octava condenser mic. This is the overhead mic that I'm using, and I'm connected to my audio interface. Pretty cool, right? Okay, now I'm coming back to you on my RE320 mic in my channel two on my audio interface, my SSL2 Plus. And I wanna show you in the software a couple things. Right away, I just wanna make sure when you pull this in, if you don't mute this, the headphones on the input monitoring from your audio interface, you're going to hear double audio. So know that you got to mute it on the input and now you will only hear it monitoring from your audio interface. So I'm plugged directly into my audio interface and I hear my mic. Now I can see things are moving, so I know that this input's moving up here, and we know that we see a signal down here going out. So those are all good things. All right, really fast, I have two quick tips for you that when you're in the Elgato software and you're using their USB mics, you will notice that right in here, you will have a PC to mic mix. It's your mic to PC mix, right? And this lets you hear everything that's played out on your PC and then also your mic volume. And the thing about the SSL2 is right on the front, you'll see that there is a input to USB mix right on the audio interface. And you can turn that left or right to monitor that. Now, not every audio interface has that. And so you would have to find one that has that input. It will help you a lot with any struggles you have monitoring your audio. Another audio interface that I believe has it in their software mix is all the new Audient ID4s and ID14s. And then the next thing that I want to tell you is if you have any other problems with left or right issues as far as your inputs as a mic, um, you go right to your own inputs under audio and sound in Windows. Scroll down to where it says mono audio combine left and right channels into one. Now watch the audio interface up here on the right side when I check that off. That over and it automatically is pulling in your left and right as one. So this could help you in a pinch, but you wouldn't even have access to this software without having the Stream Deck Plus. And then so this whole time we're talking about the Stream Deck Plus, I just want you to know on the unit yourself, the Stream Deck Plus, there's the four knobs. You can route each one to its own thing. I just wanna give you an example of how you would be able to allocate one of these buttons. You would just go to the wave link and you're gonna input actions and you're gonna make sure that this is dials because this would be keys and this would be dials. So input action, drag it on over and then you're gonna to wanna to do what with this input connected to where. So I wanna connect it to my browser because this was my Chrome right here. So I hit browser, I could type in Chrome. And then I want it going to the stream mix because we don't want it just going to the monitor mix myself. I want to go to the stream mix or you can send it to both. But the stream mix is where I like to send it. And then you can adjust the step size. That means like how many little uh, when you turn it and how many clicks it moves it one, two percent, three percent. You can adjust that. I like mine at two. And then we have that set up to Chrome 100 percent. Now, when I turn this up and down, we can see how this is moving. And also, if I hit the button, it mutes. And then if I touch the screen, it also mutes. And that's how you would add all four of your knobs and be able to use that. Plus, I made this like a little toggle. So if I push this, it would go output to the speakers or to my headphones or to whatever I choose to have it output to. So there's so much to do, but this is just an example. I just know that this is just the beginning of you messing around with your audio to get it the way you want it to be. And I just wanted to show everybody how powerful this software is. And now that we can use it with anything, 
Go out there and create. Make your own things happen audio-wise because now we have so many choices open to you for you to use when streaming and creating. So if this was any use to you, please give me a thumbs up and hey, maybe even subscribe. I'm talking to you. Maybe you want to subscribe. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate everybody that watches this and I'll catch you on the next video.